Sometimes we want to run some PHP code in terminal, maybe for quick debugging, testing, or maybe we just want to experiment with things. What would be even better is if we could interact with our Laravel application directly from the command line. Well, in Laravel, we can actually do exactly that by using a tool called Tinker. Tinker is a read eval print loop commonly known as a REPL, and it comes installed with Laravel by default. It's listed as a composer dependency, so if we open the composer.json file, we see the Tinker right here. A REPL is an interactive programming environment that takes the user input, executes it, and then returns the result to the user, repeating this process in a continuous loop. Think of it as a concept not necessarily specific to PHP. For PHP, we have SciSH package, which is a specific implementation of a REPL for PHP. Laravel Tinker is actually powered by SciSH and offers additional features tailored for Laravel applications. So what happens is that when you start Tinker, it boots up Laravel application, allowing direct interaction with the application's entire service container. This means that you can use Laravel's facades, eloquent models, and other services right from the command line. You can manipulate configurations, interact with database records through ORM, execute artisan commands, and so on. Tinker essentially allows us to interact with our Laravel application from the command line, which is fantastic because it can be used to experiment and debug. To start the Tinker session or enter into the Tinker environment, we can use the Tinker artisan command. So we'll need to run the artisan tinker command and to do that, since we're using sail, we can proxy that command to run it in docker container. So we'll do vendor bin sail artisan tinker, hit enter. And sure enough, it has opened up an interactive shell where we can type PHP code and see the results immediately. For example, maybe we want to get today's date. So we'll do date, month, day, year hit enter and sure enough it is returning the current date so as you can see we are able to run php code because date is a php function we can also assign this to a variable so we can do date equals date month day year and now we have a variable that we can reference to within this tinker session so we can do date and as you can see it is printing the current date now I use the artisan commands to open the tinker, but there is actually an easier way where we can omit the artisan part. We can do vendor bin sale tinker, and this should work the same way. So basically the artisan part isn't needed for this when using Laravel sale. All right, in addition to running PHP, we can also execute some Laravel specific code. Let's try to get our application's name from our application's configuration using Laravel's config function. So we can do something like config app.name, hit enter, and it's returning Laravel because that's the default name of the application. We're going to talk about the configuration and the config function uh, a little bit later, so just bear with me here uh, and don't worry too much about this detail. Now let's create our own class for a moment uh, with some kind of method. Let's maybe create it within the app directory. We'll call it payment service. And by the way, I have my IDE set up so that when I create new classes, it automatically adds the strict types declaration uh, in here. If you have followed my PHP series, then you should know that I advocate for strict types. That being said, you don't have to use strict types and you don't have to have this. It's just something that I add to all of my classes. So let's continue and add a method in here. We'll call it process, which will return Boolean value. We're going to echo paid and we'll return true. Let's now try to create a new instance of this class within our Tinker environment to see if that works. So we'll create a variable here called payment service and we'll assign this uh, class instance to this variable. So we'll do new app payment service because uh, remember the payment service is within the app namespace. Let's hit enter and we're getting class payment service not found. That's because Tinker does not have something like a hot reloading where the changes to the code are immediately reflected in the active Tinker session. 
To overcome this error, we need to exit the Tinker session. We can do that, and I forgot to mention that earlier, is by using Control C. So we'll click Control C. We exited the Tinker session, and then let's start it up again to see if it works on the next run. So let's start the Tinker session again. Let's try to instantiate this class this time. And as you can see, now it works. We can run the process method on it. So let's do payment service process. And that works as well. We see the paid being printed right here and it returns true. Again, if we modify the class now to return false, for example, and we try to rerun the process method, we see that it still returns true. We need to restart the Tinker session for that change to be effective. So let's uh, control C, start the Tinker session again, instantiate the object, run it, and as you can see, now it returns false. Now, even if we reinstantiate the object when changing the code, it's still not going to work. So if we change this back to true and then we try to reinstantiate the object and then run the method, we see that it's still returning false even though we've changed this to true. So again, we would need to exit the Tinker session and start a new one. It's a very minor inconvenience in my opinion, and in most cases, it's not going to be an issue. That being said, there is a paid tool called Tinkerwell that you can use which has hot reloading as well as many other features. I'm not affiliated with it and I don't get paid by saying this, just something that I've used in the past and I can recommend. Now you might be wondering why we're covering a tool like Tinker so early in the course before we've even written any Laravel code. The reason behind that is because Tinker, as you saw, allows us to uh, run PHP code in command line. And it also allows us to run and use Laravel features. This means that we can tinker around stuff in an easier way and you will see me use Tinker throughout the course to kind of show you things, how things work and so on. It's also a great teaching tool. All right, before we move on, I want to show you a couple more things about Tinker. First, what if we forgot to namespace this class? Would Tinker be able to figure out and alias it properly to the payment service class within the app namespace? So what I mean is that what if instead of doing payment service equals new app payment service, we forgot to namespace it here and we simply just did new payment service. If we click enter, we see that it doesn't work. Even restarting the Tinker session won't help in this case. So if we rerun it, we see that it still doesn't work. Now let's try running composer dump autoload to generate a new class map and then start the Tinker session. So let's exit out from here. Let's run vendor bin sale composer dump autoload. Again, I'm running it through the sale command to proxy this to the running container. Let's hit enter is going to generate the new class map files. Let's start the Tinker session. Let's try this again. And as you can see, now it's working. And notice the message here stating that it's aliasing payment service to app payment service for this Tinker session. So what this really means is that Laravel will generally try to automatically alias classes uh, on its own, but sometimes it can't do that. Whenever it can, it's going to give you that message and it will instantiate the class for you. We can actually open up the Tinker command and see uh, how the autoloader is registered there. So let's open Tinker command. Uh, let me close this for a minute. Let's scroll down. And as you can see, it registers a custom autoloader here using the autoload class map file. This class map file is the one that is automatically generated by the composer and it's not going to contain new files added to them once it's generated. So running composer dump autoload basically regenerates that file and adds the new classes to it then which allows Laravel to detect any new classes and alias them properly. You can watch my lesson on Composer uh, within the PHP series to understand better what I'm talking about if this sounds a little bit confusing. Another thing I want to show you is that you can run certain commands from the Tinker session like down and up artisan commands, which basically puts your application in maintenance mode and brings it back respectively. So let's open the terminal. 
let's type down hit enter and as you can see we get the message that application is now in maintenance mode if we open the local host and visit we see that we get 503 service unavailable meaning that our application is in maintenance mode let's run the app command now so we'll do up hit enter we see that now application is live let's open the browser refresh and as you can see our application is up and running so there are a few artisan commands that can be ran directly from tinker session and you can add your own uh, commands in the allow list for that you would need to publish a tinker configuration file and then provide the list of additional commands that can be ran from the tinker session let me actually show you how that would work so let's publish the tinkers configuration file we'll use vendor publish command for that so we'll do vendor bin sale artisan vendor publish and then we'll specify the provider here and that will be laravel tinker tinker service provider let's hit enter and as you can see the tinker file has been copied from the vendor directory into our configs directory and we're going to talk more about configs uh, soon enough so don't worry about this uh, too much right now i just want to show you where you could register uh, some of the commands that you might add later on to be able to run those uh, within the tinker session so let's open tinker.php let me close that out and as you can see the first option right here we have commands and it states right here that this option allows you to add additional commands that should be available within the tinker environment once the command is in this array you may execute the command in tinker using its name all right so speaking of configurations let's talk more about them in the next episode Thank you so much for watching if you enjoy my videos please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so until next time happy coding